Okay, hi everyone. So, um, in this little video, I will talk you and walk you through making your sterling silver horse hair and horseshoe pendant. Um, bear with me as the camera lens sometimes takes a bit longer to zoom in to what I want it to focus on. So, this is your little pendant. which comes in your kit. Um, in your kit you will also have uh, you will have your glues and adhesives, a tape measure if you want to use that, um, thread for tying off your braid, uh, chain, so your chain is stainless steel it is 40 to 45 centimeters and it also comes with an extension chain that you can fit onto it and a little heart charm to stick onto the end of it okay trying to adjust the zoom on this bit again oh dear sorry about this guys focus Okay, so ideally what you want to do is if you've got a bit of tissue paper, stick that underneath your pendant just to help protect it from getting scratched, especially on the back. If you've got a rough surface, you'll get little scratches on there, which you can buff out to some degree with a polishing cloth. So I move these bits and pieces out of the way. So you will need some sharp scissors or a Stanley knife. Um, I have a craft Stanley knife which I use. Um, I mean you do have to be a bit careful with it obviously because it is super sharp but it also helps with cutting much neater than you will find with scissors especially if your scissors aren't very sharp. Um, so we'll just pop our pendant over to the side. You may also want, if you're going to put your um, extension onto your chain, onto the end of this, you will need either some strong fingers so that you can open. Come on, camera. Wish there was a manual setting for this. So you will need strong fingers to be able to open up your jump rings or some pliers to be able to do that. So these little <coughs> these little pliers are wonderful that I've got. Again, because I do so many pieces of jewellery, um, I have a wide array of tools that I use to help me with everything. And if you're only doing a one-off, you may not want to buy them. I do have... Um, some tools available on my website in the DIY extra section that you can buy when you order or if you've got a Bunnings near you you can hop down there and um, you can buy some mini tools from there as well as well as your, your knives. Um, I don't sell the knives online only because um, I'm not quite sure how that goes with postage and security especially if it's overseas deliveries. So your knife if you wanted to get one you will need to go and purchase that yourself. Okay so let's start with a horse hair. The lovely thing about this braid is you can put in um, multiple horses. So for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to use the colour of three different horses. The amount or the number of strands that you're going to use will also depend on the thickness or the coarseness of your horse hair. So this one is relatively thick <clears throat> so if you if you're going to use main hair you will find that you'll probably need to use about twice as much or more than you would if you're going to use tail hair so it's a good guide what i found standard is doing about 12 to 15 strands of hair works really well Oops. so 
we get we'll start off and we'll get 15 strands of each color or 15 strands for each of the three parts of the plug that we're going to do so get rid of some of the other hands so you will need to count them out just for this size jewelry um, keepsake you do need to be a lot more specific with how much hair you actually use so we'll count them out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen there we go take the excess to the side now what i find the easiest way to do this is get your ends to oops, sorry i'm trying to navigate around the tripod here as well and not knock it over okay so once you've got your 15 strands of one just sort of try and line the ends up together as best you can i might just quickly adjust this oh there we go it's a bit better i don't have to be quite so low so line them up as best you can um, and then what you can do is just you can either tie it off with a thread or you can just pop a quick little knot into the end and hold it together put that bit aside so that's one strand okay. then go and do the same thing again for your second so in this case i'm using a different color to what i had before And you repeat it again you just count out your 15 strands so do that one against the white tissue makes it a bit easier to see go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and keep those take away the extras again line them up as best you can towards the end A little knot into that, pop that aside, okay, and I'll go on to my third colour. Sorry, I didn't clear my bench, and everything's getting tangled. Okay, all right, and we have our last lot. So, again, up against a white, lighter background for the dark hair helps. <clears throat> Got one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i'm only going to do 12 because the black hair is actually um, thicker than the other colors which often is the case your black tends to be your thicker strands your white tend to be thinner okay so we've got our three together here what you can do now is if you go and get your thread uh, oops, get your super glue <coughs> get your super glue ready as well and what you find is um i'm just using this one here because again i i go through a lot of glues and adhesives so i'm just going using one that i've got here ready to go so if you pop a couple of dabs on there with your thread um, sorry with your horse hair then grab your thread wrap it around the ends a few times and then tie it off now it's really important i'll note is um when you've got your silver keep your adhesives well away from the silver until it's dried especially with a super glue because if you use your super glue and it touches your silver it will tarnish and it will tarnish quite badly and makes it quite difficult to even polish it out unless you then go and get it polished by a jeweler okay so once you've got your three colors together and tied off 
I like to use um, this little fold back clip which I've got tied off to a bit of string um, and tied off to the end of the bench which works great just to hold it in place while I then go and braid so I'll just move this up a bit so I can get it into shot for the video there we go okay so the easiest braid or plait that most people know is your three strand um, much like when you do your hair uh, or girls hair I should say most likely um, so you just begin braiding so your threes you take your outside strand fold it over the top of the middle outside strand fold it over the top of the middle outside strand over the top of the middle strand and just keep repeating that and just go all the way through and play it away so ideally for this and this is where your tape will come in handy as well you will want it to be at least 10 centimeters long but you know if your hair is long and you can keep going just braid it or plait it until you get to the very end because you will probably find, especially if this is your first time making one of these pendants, that you will need to do this, um, or you will need to cut it a few times until you get the right length. Now, just before I keep plaiting, what you can do is you can pick up your pendant and you want to see or check your plait against the size of your pendant so I'll try and see if I can zoom this in okay. uh, so if I can come in a bit more. there we go so you want the width of your plait to be just a little bit narrower than what this little channel is the reason being is when you finish your plait and you go to cut it you are going to put a bit of thread around it and once that is on there you will actually need it all to fit inside that little groove so, let me get to point. so you will need it all to fit in there and you will need it all to fit in there so that looks pretty good and again you may need to do a few braids just until you get the right um, thickness okay so i'm just going to quickly finish doing this whoops release that a bit go up here and make it a bit tighter okay and keep plaiting As I said, this is where you can use your tape just to go and measure how much you have braided up. There you go, I've got nine, nine centimetres, so I'll just do a couple more centimetres in length there. Oops. Now when you get to the end of your braid, so that it doesn't all just unravel before you get to tie it off with your thread grab your super glue and just very carefully pop a little bit of super glue on the end there like so turn it over bit on there as well so that'll help keep it from unraveling before you can tie it off and do everything else with it Oops. without getting too much of the glue onto yourself of course and just tie it off roughly
Okay, so I've got our braid. You want to get your thread now. And this can be a little bit tricky. So this is where if you're... Um, if your braid or plait is too wide, when you go and do this part, it will be too thick overall to fit it into the channel. Um, so grab your thread. And you don't need to tie it off very thick at all. So if you go one, two, three, and try and get the threads to line up next to each other as opposed to overlapping themselves. Three times is enough. Then pop your thread behind and tie it off. Now I tend to use, because we don't have enough hands, when I get to this point, I grab this end between my teeth and then pull on this end. And that's behind the camera so you don't see that right now. <laughs> and do another loop. Tie that off. Okay, so now the tricky part. Grab your super glue again. You want to do this part very carefully so that your glue goes to the off cut part or part which we will be cutting off here instead of this end here. Now you want it to. go on the hair and a little bit on the thread. Do that from both sides and then continue wrapping the thread while that glue is still wet towards the towards this end here which will be our off cut bit. Like so. Then Grab a tissue and just quickly wipe off any of the excess soup glue that's there. Now that doesn't take very long to dry at all. Let's pop my lid back on there. So it takes about a minute, two minutes by the time it's fully dry. Um, what you can also do is if you've got your pliers there, or sometimes even your scissors, um, We'll have a little, there we go, that little join bit in your scissors quite often can do the trick as well. Is place the bit that you've glued in between those two little flat bits and you can squeeze it flat. Again, I've got so many tools, I'll just use my pliers because they do the job really well for me. Okay. So now that it's dry, we are going to be cutting. Um, I'll just adjust this back down again. Okay. So you can cut this with scissors. Remember, sharp scissors. And you want you don't want to cut down your braid length obviously so you want to be able to cut it as close as possible to those few strands that we used to tie it off okay, so that's just demonstrating cutting it with scissors um, the beauty with having the knife oops and I've lost the blade out of there Is that you can cut much closer and finer and often cut off any sort of extra little bits and pieces. So I'm just going to trim that up, squish it all back down again. As I said, make sure that your super glue adhesive is really dry 
before you go near silver. All right, now we have a little test to make sure that we have actually got the right width. So grab your pendant, grab your braid, stick it in the groove, which is working here, and slide it in. Now sometimes you will just need to grab a toothpick or something oops, and carefully poke it into the ends. I haven't done it, didn't do it. And just see if you can do a grab at the inside, as you can see. Just when they make, when the silversmith makes these pendants, he has to put something in there to hold it or keep it hollow when he's welding or soldering and melting. There we go, just making sure there's nothing else. Sometimes it can be quite full of this, um, there we go, cotton stuff. So then when you try to stick your braid in, it won't go very far because of that. You're just squishing it all in. blow the rest out okay so we've got our braid put it in I'm just using my fingernail to see how far in it goes okay that goes in nicely there do the other side now that one doesn't go in quite as far now it goes in quite a fair bit too okay so we're not going to glue anything in just yet because we now want to be able to get our length to the other side. So you can push it in under here through that middle part and push it right through. Keep pushing it until it pops out. You can pull it out here. Push it into the other end all the way in. Hold it down with your thumb. There we go. And keep going around. And around and around okay so based on what we've got here now whoops that was just zoom that in we have a rough idea of how long we need it to be so carefully by holding it all in place bring it all the way around so in this case we now want the thread to come about here. So about one third of the way down of the plate that you can see. So I want it to be right about there. So I'll hold that there with my fingernail and swap over to the other fingernail. That's where I want the thread to go. So we grab our thread again push it up against our fingernail where we want it one two three and over hold it all in place and tie it off again I'm going to use my teeth to hold this end Pull tight, not too tight that the string breaks. If it does, now let me just go again, not a drama. Okay. And yes, it can be very fiddly. Okay, cut the thread off. Okay. Push everything back in to make sure it's all in place. There we go. And you've got the right length, hold it all down. Strands have come out. Now check where that thread ended up in relation to this plate here. So that's actually not too bad. Because by the time you you flatten the hair down um, into that channel this bit of string will actually be a bit further to this end 
Um, now, if you've tied it off and you found it sort of all the way over here, you can redo it and string it up a bit closer to where you need it. Or what you can do is you can also use your nails quite often and just slide your thread along that braid to the position that you want. But I'm happy with where it is. So I'll just triple check, quadruple check. Yeah, that's where I want it. I'll take it all out. And take get away from the silver before I put the glue on. Grab my glue. Again, you want the glue to be on this side here, which will be the part that you're cutting off. Um, so we will carefully pop a bit of glue on this side. Pop a bit of glue on that side. Okay. Grab that thread and just give it a few more wraps. Side. Then grab your, your scissors and squeeze where you've glued with a string between there. Or if you've got your pliers, you can go and use your pliers as well. Give it a little squish down. There we go. Move our horseshoe out of the way. Give it a chance to dry. I'm going to grab my knife to do it. You can cut it with your scissors. Actually, you know what? I'll cut it with the scissors just for the sake of this exercise. It makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay, come on, zoom in. Now line it up to where you will want it. And just a little bit. There we go. And you can adjust it very carefully. You can just sort of cut that little groove bit off as well or the corners if you want okay. give it another squeeze down Oops. I'll just say some a bit more light between your scissors it's great when you find these little bits and pieces on everyday items that you can use for other things okay so once your super glue is dry, and I keep repeating myself, I keep repeating myself because I've done it so many times where I've been too impatient, didn't want to wait, and just ended up damaging the silver and having to spend a lot of time and elbow grease trying to get it out. Okay, so we'll pop that in. Yep, that fits. Pop in that end. That still fits. Oops, sorry. Just checking each end still fits in Good. okay so now I'd get ready to put it all together slide that back in so we're just going to check it one last time for fit push that in all the way And this part can be fiddly. Oh, so close. So close. Probably just a touch too long. Um, so I am just going to pull it back out. And again, this is where a knife can make life a fair bit easier in trying to get your fit right. I'll try and zoom in to see if you can. There we go. So it doesn't seem like there's a much thread, but when you zoom in, you can actually see that there is still quite a bit there. Um, I'm just going to grab a different block just to give me a bit of extra height. 
do on the videos I don't quite have everything set up the way I usually would have it so I'm just gonna pop this block in so I can get a little bit of extra height doesn't take much so in this case I am only see basically about two hair widths off it doesn't look like I've taken much off but it will make a, quite a difference oops and now if you're using your knife you just want to make sure that when you cut it that you have your knife um, angled sort of towards you so you're cutting away because quite often you will see a thickness on this side that you turn it over and you might not have quite as much thickness or thread holding it together on the other side so yeah, I'm just going to have a look I've got that much thread there and that much there so I've got a fair bit there again I'll do the same cut that off there we go Oops. move that chunky block out of the way grab my horseshoe and we'll double check our fit again Thread it in. Make sure they're all the same, nothing. Not the end of the end of it. go so that all fits in there beautiful now to keep it secure now another little trick just um, if you've got dark horse hair that you're using what you might find is when you've put your um, horse hair into that horseshoe you may find that that silver background um, if you get a little gap in there will actually show through so you can as long as it doesn't mark anything up you can actually um, just use a bit of black texture give it a little fill in the back Now for the fun part. So now that we know that this fits, what we want to do is grab our other adhesive, which is this one here. Two ways. If you've got a toothpick or something pointy like a pen, you can use that. Or... You can just carefully bring in focus. Squeeze a bit out. Dab it on the hold on camera. Squeeze a little bit out. It doesn't need much at all. There you go. Just like that. That's all you're going to need. Very carefully slide it into there and push it 
all the way to the back of that hole. Thread that in and through to the other side. Add the little bit of adhesive again, again, just the tiniest little bit. It doesn't seem like it, but once this is dried, it will be super solid and won't come apart. So you very carefully fold it down and it'll just pop in now that you've got the right size. There we go. That is a sterling silver horseshoe pendant. How easy was that? And there's quite a lot of fingerprints on there after you've handled it, obviously, and held it everywhere. So just with your tissue, you can give it a quick wipe like that. Beautiful. Okay, we'll pop that down. We'll put the lid on the adhesive, which can be used again later. So now all that's left is to let that dry. So that adhesive that we just used, this one here, will need two to three days to fully cure. Um, if you were to pick that up now, you can pull that braid out. So if you've made a mistake, you can still take it out. It's not, not a big drama to try and fix it. Okay. So then for our chain, you can either use the chain at the length that it is at the moment in there or thread that on over there now this is what I was saying you may want to use pliers if you haven't got strong fingers or strong fingernails um, being stainless steel uh, your stainless steel metal is actually a lot um, harder and stronger Oh, that was my finger that I just got in the way. Okay. So in my case, I'm going to use my little pliers and hold one end. Oops. Focus. Okay. Give it a little twist. Grab that little bit of an extension chain. That back into focus. Come on. There we go. Thread that end on. Ah. I'm trying to watch through the camera lens instead of real life. Clearly that doesn't work so well. Make it a little twist shut. Done. Then grab our little heart charm and the other jump ring. Repeat. Hold it with your pliers or fingers. Twist. Charm on. End of the chain. Twist those. There it is. And that is your finished horsehair keepsake pendant that you've just made yourself. you can show off and be super proud of having done or if you're doing something for a friend there you go I hope you have fun making it please send through pictures of your finished product I always love seeing them and um, even more so if I can share it with everybody else too. 
so I do have uh, some more products coming in time for Christmas that I'm going to be adding to my website some more DIY kits just got to work on the videos for those and the instructions but um, they will be up ready the other thing I will be doing very soon is I will have a book available on a variety of different braids that you can do um, step by step photos techniques and other things like that saves you having to google um, all of YouTube and you know google images to try and figure out what braid or how, how to do the braids all right well thank you so much enjoy your new pendant and i look forward to hearing from you guys um, and seeing your finished products bye